Well, we've had uh, two wonderful, riveting presentations. When I organized this series, I thought I was doing something for general information. I didn't quite realize that I was going to get educated myself. Uh, I have, today, I feel as if I've gone to school with Professor Bridge Gopal. I've learned a great deal. And we've had these two wonderful presentations, one rich, dense, scholarly, the other one with all the information of an activist. But both of them have one thing in common, namely passion. They're both deeply concerned about the state of the river and what we should do to revive it. I think we now have roughly 45 minutes for discussion. So I throw it open to the floor for discussion. Thank you. Please, ident Please identify yourself and be as brief as possible so that a large number of people can participate. I have something. Uh, please. I have some legitimacy in starting the discussion. I am Chaturvedi, living in Mathura. Uh, of course, now I don't live in Mathura. And more than that, I have been working on this for the last time since His Majesty's government. And uh, I c retired in India, but in, there's no retirement age in USA. So I still continue to work at Harvard University on the subject. Now, something which the presenters have not uh, presented they have not started from the earliest times. And surprisingly, I read a couplet by a Muslim poet who starts with this. Such bata e jamna kya tu wohi jamna hai jasma Krishna ji tairte the. Now, this is historical uh, scientific meaning. You see, basically, Yamuna used to meet Deva Saraswati. And actually, when we were children, and when Krishna ji kills comes, Krishnaji says, we'll move over to Dwarka. I used to, we used to wonder, why should we be moving over to Dwarka? Now again, there's a very recent book which has come out, which is scientifically emphasized, and now it has scientific implications. The scientific implications are that the surface water profile may have changed, but the groundwater becomes extremely complicated. Now the implication is pretty serious. Now, all of us have read about the arsenic problem in Bangladesh. Nobody in India is working on that. My friends at MIT at Harvard work on that. I happen to work with them. And actually, I told them that what is your legacy, and we are working out on a new science. So the sum and substance is we have to No, I'm coming to that. Now, this gentleman has totally missed this central point. So we start from that, how do we, these problems are there. How do we manage these problems? Now, I happen to be in the board of consultants of these projects. I work with the government. I've made a petition to the government. I'm working with the ministry, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. And of course, nothing happens. I have written three books, et cetera. We can manage effort with a simple solution that the low flows, you see, the low flows in rivers should not be touched. Don't touch the low flows. Let them flow. They have to manage the river dynamics. For irrigation, we require water. We have five schemes known as Chaturvedi water power machine, Chaturvedi Secretary with the government, etc. The monsoon flows, we can't start. Even if we make all the storage dams, which is very difficult in Nepal, basically will be most of the dams, we will be only able to store 20% of the water as the topography is. But we can store all the energy. We pump stored the energy in a sector, sector. So all this is brought out in three books. It has been presented with the government. And as usual, nobody listens to it. So I have a mo not much time. Actually, if someday time, I give a full presentation. Thank you. Yeah. I am uh, Raja Mani, and a colleague of uh, Professor Bich Gopal. We worked in the same place in JNU. I have something to ask of the Dr. Misraj. And also to Ram Sami Iyer. See, we know the problems. <coughs> and we think the government is empowered to take care of the problem, this entry 56. But we also know the government has not been doing anything on this. In fact, the government is the cause of the problem. And if you want, 
the person who is the cause of the problem to find a solution for it, that is not going to happen. Not as long as the human beings exist. This cannot happen and this will not happen. And ours is not a society like that. Now, who can do this? Only people have to do it. I do not think we can ask any animal to do this. But do you know one thing? Animals are doing it. Lower forms of life, they are doing it for you, which we do not know because we cannot see them, whatever they are doing. That is a big science. Supposing the whole country thinks about a very, very simple solution. Because complex problem must have very simple solution and that is, it is mandatory for every citizen of India to drink water only from the river as it is. <laughs> drink water from the river, we are not depriving anybody of anything. Drink water from the river as it exists, there is no other way you get water. Please. Is it possible? Is it implementable? This is the only way because all our actions, including the recent spectrum sale, will end up in water. No matter you think about any human activity, any life activity, it will end up in water because life has come out of water. So, the simple solution is, just as it existed 100 years ago and it still exists in some parts of India, people should drink water only from the river. Simple solution, how do we implement it? This is for Ram Samya here to <laughs> respond. It's simple, I am not depriving anybody anything. I thought you were a question to Mr. Yeah, yeah, that is, you see this government Sarkar, we know what Sarkar is. Many of us were part of the Sarkar also. We only get realization only after coming out of the Sarkar. I, I, this is a very anomalous situation. You see, the Western world realized it long time ago. I mean, the path of development that we follow is theirs. We are committing the same mistake. Because, you see, I tell you my personal experience it will be in, you know, educational. I grew up, I studied on the bank of river Kaveri. I went to study and did PhD in New York. I was doing field work, I am a geologist. I was doing field work with an American professor of mine. There was a small river called the Poughkeepsie River in upstate New York, which is a tributary to Hudson River. During the lunch time, during the lunch, we went with our sandwiches. We were sitting on the bank of River Poughkeepsie. This was the year 1969. Then after eating the sandwich, I thought I will go to the river and drink the water. The professor told me, are you mad fellow? Can you drink water from the river? I said, why not? Nobody drinks, but then I told him, I asked him, but when we were in the colleges and universities, we were told in America even the rivers carry honey and milk. Now you are telling we can't even drink the water. We don't know any other water. In India, we have been drinking water only from the river. But this is what that country is. And that country has a model of development and we want to follow that. Remember, eight months or nine months in a year, they cannot use water for sanitation because water is frozen. That is why toilet paper came. Please understand, eight months, nine months in North America and Europe, they can't use water. There is no liquid water unless you heat up. It all happened after the 12th century. 
some flowing water at home. And how that model is applicable to us? That is all I think I am just throwing open. Simple suggestion is tell the government we should all drink water from the river, unprocessed. Unprocessed water from the river, Katam. then the population will definitely come down. Half the problem will be solved. Yes. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I wanted to strengthen the hands of the previous two speakers. <laughs> uh, some instances which you gleaned, as you said, you are poiser after you retire. But this wisdom comes out of the experience you gained when you were in government. I use that knowledge to say things now, which really happened. So that three or four important points which are made here, I want to touch one or two of them only. About first the heading. Dying river, living river. There is no third heading, but I thought something in between is also. There is somebody who is murdering the rivers. Is there, is there something that we can do about that hand at least? The last note which was here says, Government of India has all the powers. Manoj Mishra said that. He said that somewhat different way, same thing. I want to say, if it doesn't do any good, you should at least not interfere to negative manner of murdering the river. So most of the problems that Yamuna has in this country, I'm referring to only Yamuna here, the problems were created by the governments themselves. Largely, the people who governed the Delhi and the northern region right from Tajewala to Delhi region. Very often, you accuse the wrong person. Very, this today I heard two, three speakers saying it is the engineers who had created the bane. It is they who built the dams. It is they who took the way. What? No. Engineers are the tools. Don't blame the screwdriver. Blame the hand. There are politicians. There are statesmen. There are vote gatherers who want these done and these people are paid salaries to do that. Now, it is not that the government did not know there is something wrong if you do these things and there will be disaster. So I want to use my own experience in this manner, like Professor Gopal did. In 1980, when I used to be a chief engineer in the central government, the DDA, which was then preparing a master plan for reclaiming half the river and converting into the urban civilization, asked CWC only to give what should be the flood figure, because the Tajewala barrage was designed for some figure, old Vokala barrage was some other figure, 1.5 like you said, 2.5. But Central Water Commission engineers at that time went a little beyond and said that figure can be this. But they added Suvo motto that there is a great caution that they said that what you are trying to do in the DDA of reclaiming the river is going to be the start of a disaster for the Delhi region. And uh, uh, they organized, in fact, on their own a seminar in the Central Board of Irrigation and Power called various engineers and the DDA people and made a presentation and I wanted to quote one sentence or two out of that. The consensus of the workshop was that the effect of the channelization as proposed by DDA at that time would disturb the river regime, increase the flood hazard and create more problems than solutions. And the further proposal to large-scale urbanization and settlement in that region is fraught with grave disaster. 1980, this was a seminar in 1980 where the caution. DDS said, we only asked you about the flood portion. We acted on that. What should be the figure for which that barrage should be designed? Balance they ignored. Now, this continued to be brought out at different fora. The Rashtriya Bada Yoga again brought that as a special point. Intrusion into the floodplains, mostly by the government and its own agencies, is creating a problem. And then they said that uh, respect the river's terrain, please don't interfere or interfere in a manner which is compatible with the river, that some playground, or stadium, or things, so that no hospitals, no urban civilization, etc. So, the Rashtriya Bada Yoga recommendations were there, and every state government agreed, great. We will implement it soon, including Delhi government and Punjab and Haryana and UP. 
They didn't implement. Twenty years later, they set a committee. When I was a member in the Central Water Commission, why are these implementations not taking place? The committee found out because they are insincere. They only said that because they had to be consensus, they didn't want to be singled out. None of them want to implement, that is a fact. So after my retirement, ten years later, again I became chairman of a particular committee. The committee was called, set up by planning commission at that time, an expert committee review why the Rotary body work is not implemented, or is it not relevant at all. Again, this committee drew attention to all this and said that, right now, the committee was in 2000. So it's a right now, under our very nose, it is happening at the Noida corner. A certain 60-acre temple complex was coming. What they did not say, because there was a problem of how to state that in open language, because many of them were officials in the government and only a few, like the chairman, were retired. They said that a minister may be interested in that area, and the minister may be very powerful and number two in that cabinet. So they said still, they went forward to say that, that this is a wrong step and the one will lead to another. Once you do this, the next man who is adjacent to it will ask for the land, which later turned out to be prophetic because that is what was the claim for Commonwealth Village. And today I'm making a claim, this is what will happen right from Mayuri or Pesun, Manajumar knows all that walking area up to Chilla, all that area will get occupied. The other side already is occupied by Metro. You are protesting, but you are protesting against the, as he pointed out, man from Kaveri. I am another man from Kaveri. Your protest is pro forma. Their reply is also pro forma. Their action is different. They will continue to occupy the land and say it is protected. So what is important thing is people's power should be used to see if the government does not help into this situation, they should at least not interfere negatively in this situation. If you are able to do, you have taken a first big step towards rejuvenation of rivers. Thank you. Actually, I have a few questions to ask, clarifications more than um, d dwelling on past experience, etc. I've worked in the environment and did now working as a consultant. Um, several issues. First of all, I think we are di divorcing a little bit the whole case of why the rivers are dying from the political economy in the sense that I fully agree that everything is happening and it's a very bleak picture. But as long as you have a politic which says that you are, it's run of the river projects are better than thermal projects, and you know, that's the whole driving force for the Heidel uh, thing in Arunachal, Himachal and Uttarakhand. As a Himachali, it, it's very painful. But that is the thing, and unless that those fundamentals are dealt with, it's very, very difficult to do so. Apart from the fact that there is no river basin planning at all. I mean, nobody, it's this piecemeal ad hoc kind of thing. And I, what I wanted to ask basically was, are there good examples here or elsewhere of an integrated river planning approach. Because what I found is, in my limited thing, is that you find somebody who's done something just for catchment treatment plan, but other aspects are left and so on. So that's my first question. The second question relates to this whole business of ecological flows, and Professor Brijkoval has been involved in Himachal with this whole issue. Uh, unfortunately, unless there is some, I mean, I, I don't know, it's, you know, I saw your formula and all that, but in Himachal, we, we came out with something and it has been so very, very difficult to enforce. There is no acceptance of the need for a minimum, you know, thing to ensure ecological life. And it's just been something which has been, um, how I say, fought out in the court. I don't even know what the latest uh, status is of that, to be very frank. And it, it, unless there is some, I would say, voice that comes out, it has to be a regulatory thing. It has to come from the state. It cannot come from, you know, I'm sorry to say, it cannot just come from a people's movement because this regulation, where this idle, how else do you enforce it? So I think, I think the state also, and I'm be, I've been a civil servant, so <laughs> I don't think there's understanding a lot of, of a lot of the issues, apart from the fact that, you know, you can blame them and this callous, but I don't think there is that understanding. So the thing of making awareness, people aware of the implications, like 
can we work out a carrying capacity for the Sutledge Basin? Can we, you know, something like that? that those are my questions. I would like very much to see the People's River Health Index publication, if you could give me a reference to that. And the last question I want to say is that if we really want to change this, we need to make, integrate the study of the river dying, of, the, of many rivers dying, I think, this is just an example, with the impact on livelihoods. Without doing that, sometimes it's not fully understood. And I'm wondering if I could be pointed in the direction of some studies that may have been done to integrate what has happened to a particular lifestyle or what, when the river has changed its course, what has it meant for farmers. Not only displacement because of dams, that is one aspect of it. But I want to know concrete studies where there's some empirical evidence base to say, yes, this has changed. I mean, so I, those are my questions. It's more 